All right, uh, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here uh, talking about real music in real time for real people just like you, just like me. So Ted Nugent uh, is a little ticked off again. Uncle Ted running around 73 years old yelling at every kid who's on his lawn. Um, this time it's Joan Jett who was just named as one of Rolling Stone's top 100 guitar players of all time. Now, um, I know a guy who uh, toils uh, without much recognition who's in a band called the Bridget Kelly Band. Uh, his wife is Bridget Kelly. Uh, he is in the band as lead guitarist. His name is Tim Fick, F-I-K, in case you want to look this up. Tim Fick, uh, is a better guitar player than Joan Jett. And I see this a lot where society is out of whack based on just associations, based on the fact that certain people get certain credentials and they become popular. Um, keep in mind, Joan Jett's career was launched uh, covering a song by the Arrows. In case you didn't know that, there are a lot of people out there who think that I Love Rock and Roll is a Joan Jett original. It's not. 1975, The Arrows, and they do a good version of the song, by the way, if you go back and listen to it. Um, I think you're going to like it. Uh, it's not as good as Joan Jett's version, and certainly they amped it up, they torqued it up. Uh, she's perfect for the song. I have nothing against her and her career, which, by the way, really peaked on that uh, first record. She had some other moments. I Hate Myself for Loving You, Little Liar. There's some other songs, Bad Reputation, if you go back a little further. And uh, for some reason, uh, her stint in The Runaways gives these uh, rock critics like all kinds of goosebumps like, this is the greatest thing, The Runaways. I mean, The Runaways, okay, they're all right. Lita Ford was in The Runaways. I mean, but to put Joan Jett in the same skill level as a lot of these other just insanely great guitar players, you know, I mean, <clears throat> it's, it's a bit of a stretch. And Nugent has a point. Now, Nugent has his own brief little list of uh, omissions um, in the article that I read. And his list has some that I've never even thought about, really. He talks about Tommy Shaw. Okay, as much as Tommy gets under my skin with his whole, I won't reunite with Dennis no matter what. But Tommy Shaw is a pretty good guitarist. And uh, when he joined Sticks, a lot of uh, cool things began to happen. Not sure what happened to JY at that point, but uh, in any event, he goes on to talk about Ricky Medlock, Dave Amato from Ario Speedwagon, um, Dick Wagner and the Frost from Detroit, not really that familiar with, uh, Mark Farner from uh, Grand Funk Railroad. Okay, interesting list, uh, but <laughs> there are plenty more where that came from. Um, look, here's... The bottom line on this, and you know where I'm going, or you know why Joan Jett um, checks off a couple of boxes, and this is what is most important. Uh, they care more about her personal behavior, what she chooses to do with her life, uh, her status. I don't know. I don't want to get too close to what this is, but you know, right? Um, by the way, Nugent in the article says, I love these people. They're great. I mean, is, he says something like it's a fantasy of wonder or something like that. <laughs> the, the kind of the lifestyle that Joan Jett chose or that she is, or however you view that. I'm not here to judge that. I'm just here to tell you um, she checks off boxes and she's a woman. All right. That checks another box. I mean, is Nancy Wilson, is she on this list from Heart? because I think she's probably a really good guitarist as well, but she only probably checks one box. So Joan Jett, she checks two boxes, um, and that's why she's on 
the top 100. So um, your your skill, the level of skill that you bring to the table apparently is like a secondary attribute. You know, it's like Stevie Nicks <clears throat> when she got into the Hall of Fame. It was like her solo career was pretty good, but was it better than the solo career of Carly Simon? Was it better than the solo career of Pat Benatar? Again, I've mentioned the problem with Pat Benatar is her husband is there and that is hurting Pat Benatar because they're going to say, look, uh, she just got help from a man and see Stevie Nicks broke away from the man and uh, Joan Jett has no use for the man. See how that all works? Uh, it's crazy. It's like we've inverted normal human interaction and we've made the stuff that's less apparent or less universal so accepted and so lauded and just way out of whack with reality that that is what people look at, not their skill set. Remember my friend Tim? My friend Tim can shred like nobody's business. I would put him up against any guitar player. I watch him. I've seen him up close. And this is the awesome thing, too, about going to a dive bar and watching a beast blues guitar player with boundless energy and decades worth of playing under his belt with no press, with, um, you know, no ink. Nobody's talking about Tim Fick. Uh, nobody's going to be going out and buying, you know, um, Bridget Kelly albums by the truckload. I wish they would. I mean, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I've got to be in a certain mood for it. But Tim on every song never disappoints me. Just an amazing player. And nobody knows who he is. And you probably know somebody locally who can uh, play circles around Joan Jett. <laughs> or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe Joan Jett is better than I think she is. I don't think she's bad. I just think she does what she needs to do. She's one of those guitar players that is able to do what she needs to do in order to um, keep her career going and uh, to perform the music that she performs. Are there any like memorable Joan Jett guitar solos that you can remember? I mean, when it comes to great guitar players like David Gilmore, I mean, who can forget like comfortably numb? I mean, there are certain songs that you know and you go, yeah, that's, See, this is about leveling the playing field. We need more ladies. We got to find ladies, even if they don't, you know, um, measure up in some ways. We need more ladies in there to, to show that we're virtuous and that we're compassionate and that we understand. And then we need more ladies that don't like men because that even shows more how much we care about making things right. So... Nugent, um, he doesn't come out and say those things. He basically complains that, again, and you can, you can do both. You can complain that this is some kind of a quota system that they need to, to represent and fill. And you can make the point where uh, it's like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. All these bands that aren't in and these other people get in and you're like, but you didn't put this band in. You know, and I could go on and on about that, and I have. So, you know, I don't know. The top 100, here's, here's the thing about music, right? To some degree, it's very subjective. And then you've got different styles. You've got guys like Joe Satriani. You've got guys like Eric Clapton. You've got guys like Steve Vai. And you go on down the list of guitar players, and everybody has a different style. Most of the blues rock guitarists that I listen to, and I do on a regular basis, they blow most of uh, the rock world out of the water because they're doing so much more with their guitars. And this song is built around the fact that they're going to kill you with a solo. They're going to blister you throughout the song. Um, in any event, Joan Jett, big guitar riffs, cool riffs at times, um, decent songs. I mean, these are rock anthems to some degree, going back to the Runaways and right through her career, which uh, quite honestly is 
her catalog of radio friendly stuff and even album rock radio friendly stuff, probably less than 10 songs. And you really got to kind of look around for those songs. Um, maybe 10, 12 maximum, but most everybody, I love rock and roll, baby. Put another dime in the jukebox. Okay. And again, you can thank the arrows for that song because it's their song in any event. Um, that's my video on the topic. Um, you may disagree. That's fine. I like Joan Jett. I mean, I'd go see Joan Jett, but I don't look at her as like this axe slinger guitarist. She's a serviceable player. She does what she needs to do. Uh, she has a very distinctive style. And again, a case of style over substance. Don't know. I think it's just another makeup call. And we're trying to make the world perfect and the world ain't going to be perfect.